Okay, so this is a tutorial on installing uh, Wikibase using the Docker image on a uh, provider, so an actual internet uh, service provider. Um, we're going to go through configuring some settings um, with the Docker image and Wikibase itself. And we're also going to get OAuth set up so that you can use quick statements, um, which is very important. So there is, this is a video tutorial, but there's also a text uh, portion to it. So if you don't want to type out all the commands, you can copy and paste some of the text um, at that web address below. Um, and also important, this is for the version 1.33, um, and it's September 2019. So let's get started. So to begin with, we need a, um, a provider to run this, a server to run this uh, wiki based on. Um, so I'm going to use DigitalOcean today. Um, it's not um, the only one you can use. You can use something like Amazon Web Services or something else, um, but it's a little bit straightforward for our purposes using uh, DigitalOcean. So the first thing you need to do is have a um, instance spun up. So if you create an account or if you have one, you're going to sign in, and you're going to go up here and create uh, a new droplet. And we're going to pick some settings here. So we're going to do um, this dis container distri distributions. So this is just basically the operating system that the server is going to run. We're going to pick CoreOS, which is a um, more Docker specific uh, uh, operating system. Um, you could use an, a different one, but for our purposes, it already has Docker installed and it's a little bit easier to get going with. So we're going to use that. Um, the server size, so this is important, we're going to go with the $20 a month 4 gigabyte size. This is big enough to run Wikibase and the query service and quick statements and all its other pieces that come with it. Um, you pick a region that's near you, so I'm just going to pick New York uh, Region 3. And so this is a, the first little tricky piece here is we need a SSH key to, to log into the server. Um, so if you have one, you can just add it, but you might not have one yet. So let's go through the process of creating one. So if you click this new SSH command, it will give you some instructions. Um, it's giving me instructions here for um, a Mac computer because that's what I'm using. But you can do the same process on uh, Windows, um, Windows 10. And if you don't have Windows 10, you can use PuTTY, which is an SSH program. But basically, we need to generate a, a public and private key to, and then give DigitalOcean the public key, and then we'll have the private key so that we can log on to the server. So to do that, it tells me I can use this command to generate a new key. So I'm gonna open up my terminal and run that command. So here's my terminal. Um, it's asking for, uh, I'll run this command, and it'll ask for uh, where I wanna save this file. So it gives you a suggestion there, but I'm just gonna create a new file in my user directory. I'm going to call it Wikibase and no passphrase. All right, so I created the file um, and stored here in my user directory. And this is the, the public version of it that I want to give DigitalOcean so it knows how to log me in. So I can run this cat command, which just um, uh, reads the file and prints the contents. And so this is actually my public key that I can use for DigitalOcean. So I'm going to go back to this here. and put in my public key, I'll call it Wikibase, and I'll add it. So now it's all set. Um, I'll just call this Wikibase, uh, and it's selected there. That's everything it needs to, to create the server. So let's create it. And we'll go into it. And so as this is loading, uh, it's spawning the server and spinning things up. Um, but this is going to be our public IP address, the IP address we'll use for the rest of the uh, tutorial. Um, so you'll have, of course, a different IP address. But for us, we're going to copy that. This is the drop that's been created, and it's all set to go. So now we need to get onto the server using SSH. Um, I'm on this um, Mac system again, so if, you, if you're on Windows 10, you can use this SSH. Or if you're not on Windows 10, you could use PuTTY. Um, but the important thing is you need to tell the SSH connection what key to use and um, what uh, username to log in as. So I'm going to SSH to the server, and I'm going to pass it 
the um, command to tell it where to look for the key. And it's in my user's directory, SSH directory, and it's called the key base. And then I'm also going to tell um, the user to log in as. So on these core OS operating systems, the username is core. And then you can say, at what address is that going to be? And that's the IP address I just copied from DigitalOcean. So if I run this, hopefully it will connect. It will ask me if I want to, kind of, um, you know, sure I want to tr trust this host, and I say yes. And there it is. So I connected to the server, and you can tell I'm logged in to this remote server. So now we want to start up Wikibase uh, and get everything going. So this is still the step one of the directions if you're following on the web page. But we're going to install um, the Wikibase Docker component using this uh, Wikibase uh, repo, uh, GitHub repo that has all the information, the Docker Compose file. So we need to clone this to our, our, to our, um, our server. So if we clone that, We'll say git clone. And so that made a directory, it cloned it. It's a pretty small repo, so it's there. And so we can change directory into there and we can see what's going on, some files around in there. And the next thing we wanna do is clone the um, other repo that I've put together that has some support files. So these are things just to make things a little bit easier, installing stuff um, and to kind of help things out um, go a little bit quicker. So then we're also going to um, clone this repo to our, our server. So I can see that that file is there and it's right here. All right, so now we have the everything we need. We have the Docker Compose file and we have our local support files downloaded. And so Docker is an individual program that does virtualization of, of components that, to run systems. But there's also this tool called Docker Compose, which actually um, combines multiple Docker images together into a package and then kind of runs it all together as one system. And so uh, that's not installed. Docker Compose is not installed by default for this operating system. Um, so what we were going to do is install Docker Compose um, as a tool. And so I made this a little bit simpler in this directory is a, um, a little script that lets, that does that installation for you. So what we need to do is just make that script executable and then execute it. So we're gonna chmod and we're gonna add x means executable. And um, the file is called install compose. So we just made that file executable and then I'm just gonna run it like this. And one thing is you have to run it as a sudo. So you have to be like an administrator. So we'll say sudo and then run it like this. It has to be run as administrator because it's installing some things in various places that um, has to have administrative permissions. All right, so now that sudo uh, uh, install compose ran, it downloaded this um, compose software. We now have Docker compose available to us. And so that is the program we're going to be using to run these Docker files. And so all we need to do, since we're in the same directory with this Docker compose files, is say Docker compose up. And so what this is going to do is download all these Docker images. And after it's finished downloading everything and extracting all the different pieces and components, it's going to start up the server uh, and launch the application. So this will take a minute, um, so we'll fast forward for a second. Okay, so now that we see this message here, this, this WDSQ updater is sleeping here, that means this, everything's up and running and all the services are going. So what we can do now is, you know, we can take our IP address that we got here and we actually go to that IP address now. And the service, the main service is running on a, a specific port, 8181. So if we put that port, uh, the IP address colon that port, we'll get to our, our new server. And so here it is, it's running. It's the very uh, basic wiki base installation. 
And so what we want to do um, is modify these, some things. So um, we don't want to be able to create an account, right? Um, and we also want to set up some other stuff to uh, allow OAuth so we can use quick statements. But one thing I noticed, at least for this, this version of release, we want to create uh, some data first um, because I've noticed, at least in this version, if you run the, run the Docker image and then close it and then run it again without having any data after an initialization, it gets a little bit wonky. The update doesn't seem to work. So what we're going to do is just come into the special pages really quickly uh, and make some um, items and some properties really quick. And so this is how you do it manually. Um, you come in here and say, let's create a new property. Let's just do like an RDF type or something like that. Type of. Uh, and we'll say this types to an item data type. Um, and let's make a new pro another property called uh, first name or something like that. This is just will be a string. Uh, and then let's make an item. Uh, and this will just call it a person or something like that. All right, so now we made some data, um, some items, and some properties. There it is. Let's um, move on to the next step. So what we want to do is quickly uh, gather some information for the next step in the process. Um, so what we want to do is make an OAuth um, key for our, our uh, quick statements tool. So what we're going to do is actually you need to register the OAuth uh, key with Wikibase first and then to supply it to the quick statements image. So what we're going to do is go to special pages on the left there, find, oh, sorry. So first we need to log in. So at, by default, we're not logged in. Um, so I'm, I haven't modified the username and password, which you'll probably want to do. So I'm just, this is just the default um, password and, and username. All right, so now I'm logged in as the administrator. I'll have a different set of options over here in the special pages. So what I want to do is find this OAuth consumer registration. And this um, allows you to, to request a new um, OAuth token be generated. So you request a new token. And you need to fill out this application um, form. So we'll quick statements. Um, quick statements. Uh, so this callback is um, the the address that you'll want to provide for the um, OAuth verification. So we're using quick statements and it's going to run on, uh, it's running on port 9191. Uh, and then its endpoint is uh, api.php. So if we provide that as an endpoint, it knows how to call back to the, the quick statements application. We want to make sure this is checked. And then we need to sp suggest or pick the, the specific um, uh, authorizations it's able to do. So we want it to be able to do high volume editing. So these three. And then we also want it to be able to create pages. So those are the minimum things um, quick statement tool needs to get running. So we'll leave it at that. And then let's agree and we'll propose consumer. So this is important to keep track of this information. So this is the only time it will tell us our secret token, our OAuth token. So you can get this again, but this is the only time we'll see this information. So you want to copy and paste this somewhere in a notepad or something for later use. All right, so I copy and paste it. Um, and so now what we need to do is this is this was just a proposal. We need to approve our own OAuth um, uh, tokens. Um, so we'll go to special pages and we'll go down to manage OAuth consumers. And then it says queue of proposed consumer requests. We'll go into there. This is the, the request we just made. So we'll review and manage it. And then we'll come down here uh, and we'll say, yes, that's great and we'll approve this consumer. All right, so now that is active on the site. 
so now this uh, consumer token, we can use it in quick statements and we're ready to go do some more um, editing on our configuration. So what we're gonna do is head back to our console and see how this is running. And we're going to do control C to stop it gracefully. And so this will shut down the wiki-based Docker images running um, and I'll turn off the server, the wiki-based server. All right, so now that it's off, we can start editing the configuration. So the main thing is that this is the file. The Docker Compose is the um, .yml is the file where all the configurations for it is stored. So to edit it, we need an, uh, an editor, right, a text editor. So the one that comes built in with this core OS uh, distribution is called VI. So we can just say VI and then the Docker Compose .yml. And so this is the editor. You can move around. Um, if you've never used VI before, you can move around. There's a little bit tricky um, to get used to how its, uh, its commands work. But if you ever um, make a mistake or something happens, you can always uh, hit escape and then do colon and Q and exclamation point, And that will get back to um, the command line and not save anything. So let's go back in. And what we want to do is um, a few things. So we want to disable um, people making new accounts um, and disable public editing. So it's just kind of locked down to, to the admin account. The admin account can create accounts if it needs to. Um, I want to show how to change the logo just to show how you can customize things. Um, and then we also want to implement those OAuth tokens that we just generated and be able to pass them to the quick statements tool so we can use quick statements. Um, so the way that we're gonna do this is that basically Docker allows you to mount files, local files over a file in an image. So that means that I can have a local file in my directory and say, Docker, I want you to take this file and replace it, the one that's running on the, in that Docker image. Um, so what you can do is you can overlay some configuration files over the ones in the image. So you can, that's the way you can kind of make customizations. If we scroll through here, we'll see that there's the wiki-based service, and these have environmental variables that you can change. Um, so things like the username and passwords um, and other sorts of uh, values. There's the MySQL host, there's the, the front-end query service host, and then there's the, the, the Blaze Graph back-end host, and then there's the updater host, and there's Elasticsearch, et cetera. So there's a lot of components, and then here's the quick statements. So there's a lot of components in this um, compose file, and we're going to edit some of these um, mount points so that we can provide our own, our own um, configurations. So the first one we want to do is add our own configuration to Wikibase. So if we go back to here and we um, look in this Wikibase local file, I have a few files that we're actually going to overlay our local file. So we're going to overlay this file onto the um, Docker image. So if we take a look at it, um, what's in there? So this is the, the configuration file that Wikimedia um, uses to um, uh, configure the instance of it. And so it has a kind of very common um, configuration variables that you can set for all things. So if you're running uh, just like a Wikipedia type uh, instance versus a wiki base, um, but also has very specific uh, wiki based stuff. And so the things that we've added, I've added here are um, these two permissions here. So this permission allows, disables um, anonymous public editing. And then this one allows, this allows anyone from being able to create an account. So everything else was already here. I just added these two commands and I'll put a link to um, the, the manual for all the possible commands. There's a lot of commands that you can configure your instance with, um, but these are the only two that we're gonna use today. So I'm gonna quit. So that file we want to tell Docker Compose to say, hey, take this local file and write it over um, the one that you're using in the Docker image. And we also wanna do that for our OAuth tokens. So we're gonna go back and edit this Docker Compose file again. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to point to where we want the file to come from and then where to overlay it on the system. And you do that in this volumes section of the configuration. 
So to edit this, I'm going to press the I key, and then you'll see Insert is available, and now I can edit this file. And so what I'm going to paste in here is the pointer from the um, from the local wiki base um, local settings file I cr I have there, and then point it to where I want it to go. So I'm just copying and pasting this from the um, web page uh, for the step three or step four. I'm sorry. And so we want to make sure there's a dash in front of it. So we're saying, okay, here's the local file, wiki basic local, local settings.php, and I want you to put that over this file in the image, the file that um, is controls the configuration in the image. So it's going to mount that file and replace the one on the image. The other way I just want to show how you can do this is use the same technique to mount a local uh, a custom image that you, you want for your logo or something else, maybe like a theme change or something like that you can do. And so what we're going to do is just mount um, another file over the image being used on the um, Docker image. So we're saying, okay, I have this custom image here and you could customize this for however you wanted. And I want you to overlay it on this one on the image where the image is actually um, being pulled from on the Docker. So that's all we're going to change for the wiki base. That's going to change our configuration and it's going to kind of add a little customization for our logo. The other thing we need to change here is this um, QS public scheme host and port. So this is telling the wiki base instance where the quick statement is running. And so if you're running this locally, local host would be fine. But since we're not running it locally, we're running it on a public server, we want to give it the IP address, right? And so this is just, again, the IP address that we've been doing everything with. All right, so that's all we're going to change for um, the wiki base. And since now we need to configure a couple of things for the uh, quick statements tool. So the quick statements entry is at the very bottom here, quick statements. And likewise, we need to change, um, we need to tell it where it's running publicly as well. So we're going to change the local host to the IP address for that. And then this is the wiki base where it's running. And now it knows the, the correct web address. So the other thing we're going to add here is the um, OAuth token. And so at least in this version, um, it is um, supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be configured this way. You're supposed to be able to pass the OAuth token via the environmental var variables. And I'm assuming that that will work eventually. For this uh, specific release, I think there's a bug where it's not allowing the OAuth variables to be read from the environmental variables. but at some point that probably will work. So we're gonna do it both ways just to show um, how you can configure it but either way from the environmental variables and also we're gonna do a file uh, change as well. So I copied and um, pasted uh, the keys that I had used before that we copied and pasted from earlier in the OAuth process. So you need to paste those in like this. And so that's really all the configurations we're going to do in the Docker Compose um, file. So if we hit Escape and we do colon W and hit Enter, it will write the file out. And then we can hit colon Q to quit the VI program. So now we're back at our command line. And so the only other thing we need to do really is to um, finish this OAuth setup. So like I said, I think there's maybe specifically to this version that um, we're using today, there's a little bit of a bug, I think, that prevents the OAuth tokens from being passed correctly. But what you can do is that there's this file on the Docker image um, called QS OAuth. And this is just a JSON file holding the OAuth token keys. And so what we can do is we can um, overlay that file on the host system um, so that we can kind of directly feed in our OAuth tokens. So what we need to do is we need to edit this file, our local file of it. And we need to replace uh, these values. So I'm gonna hit I to insert. We replace these values with our current token and secret information. All right. So I'll uh, colon W right and quit. And so that file's there. And the last thing we need to do is modify our Docker 
compose file again to make it aware that we want to put that file on the server for the quick statements tool. So the same way that we use volumes to overwrite um, the um, configuration for the wiki base instance, we're going to use the volumes to overwrite this other um, configuration for the uh, quick statements data. And so what we're going to do, I'm just going to copy this. So this again is saying, okay, I want to copy this file that we just edited with our OAuth token information and overwrite it to the one on the image where it's being stored. So when quick statements loads, it will read this file that now has our information in it and it will know, it will be aware of our, our tokens that's supposed to use. So I'm going to write that file out again and quit. Okay, so now that we are done configuring everything, um, we want to um, move on and test this, right? So we're done with uh, step four, now we're moving on to step five, if you're looking in the, in the text version of this. Um, so what we wanna do is start the Docker image again. So we're gonna say Docker compose up. And this time it'll be much quicker because it doesn't need to download all those uh, images and extract them. It's just gonna, it's already downloaded, so it's gonna turn on the search service and start running. And so what's different now though is that it's using our configuration files, right? So we're over, we overwrote some of those configurations with our own um, and now it's running based on those instead of its own kind of default information. All right, so we see this is sleeping for 10, so we know it's done running. So if we go back to our um, installation here and we go to the home page, so it looks the same, but if we do a hard refresh, we can see that now it's, we have our custom logo that we loaded there. Um, let's log out really quickly. And so now if you're on the home page, you can see you cannot create an account anymore. Uh, you can only log in. Um, and if you're on a, an item or something like that, there's no way of uh, editing it because I'm not logged in. Um, so let's log in as our admin again. So now that we're logged in, the last thing we really want to do is check to make sure that the quick statements tool is working, right? And so if we look up here, it's running on 8181. We know quick statements is run on 9191. So if we change it to that and run there, we'll see that the quick statements tool is running and the only thing that we need to do is log in. So this is gonna make the connection, the OAuth connection from the quick statements tool to Wikibase and back. So let's see if it works. So it redirected it to Wikibase and it's, it says, I want you to allow you know, quick statements tool to do these actions using your account. And you say allow. And then it forwards it back to the quick statements and now you're logged in and everything uh, should be configured. Try making some new data in here. So let's try to, um, um, you know, you can use this help link to look at any um, previous or to look at any uh, syntax information for how to use a quick statements tool. But I know that if you use the create command and then you can say the last thing you created, I want you to sign an English uh, language label, say Matt Miller. And then, you know, you can um, run another command Let's give it the P1, which is the type of thing, and it's Q1, which was a person. Um, and I'll say last, and we'll say P2, and that type of thing is, uh, that was a string, first name. Right, and then you can create another one and keep doing the same over and over again with uh, spreadsheet inputs. All right, so now that I have some statements here, I can try to import them. Um, and this doesn't work. This run in background does not work, but this run in browser should. So let's try it and no errors. So let's go back to um, our 8181 and see if I'm there. Yep, here I am. And I have my two statements added. 
So that is how we want to get. So we know quick statements working. The last thing we want to check is the query service, um, which is the Sparkle query service. That's running on 8282. So if we go there, we can see our Sparkle service. And let's just create a new filter um, person. So let's create a, little, a Sparkle service saying, okay, these are the pe things in the, the items in, the, in our wiki base that has that. There I am. And these are the other two I created earlier. So we know quick statement works and the query service works. So that our configuration is pretty much done. The last step, if we want to do it, will be um, doing some more kind of like um, system administration stuff. So if you were planning on using this wiki base instance for um, you know, just like a couple hours or something like that. You could probably get away with just running it like this in the in the command line here. Um, but as soon as you close this session, um, the server will turn off. Um, I mean, the wiki base server will turn off. Um, so what, if you are planning on keeping this around for a little bit longer, um, you probably want to make this um, a little bit more robust. So we want it to um, start up when the computer turns on or if the computer reboots or something like that. We want it to turn back on. So what we're going to do is go back and um, gracefully shut down doing control C. And so what, what I included in the auxiliary files, there are two little scripts that will create um, one will create a swap space on the server. So this is kind of basically making a little bit of room on the hard drive to be used as RAM in case things run out of memory. So we, um, we have four gigabytes um, being used, but I think that gets used up pretty quickly. So it's nice to have a little swap space just in case. Um, memory usage spikes or something. Um, and then we're also, we have a script there that um, makes this Docker Compose up basically a service that will always be run uh, on this computer. So it's always, will always be running. And so what, if we want to, if you do want to have those things, um, you know, have a little bit more of a permanent server, we can go into this wiki base basic local directory. And these are the two scripts that, do, that does this process to make service and create swap. Um, so the same way we use the install um, compose file to install compose, we, we can do the same thing. So we're going to chmod make it executable called make service or chmod uh, create swap. And so we just need to run these two scripts as sudo. creates a swap and then we can say sudo make service. And so that what it does is basically it copies over um, the service file into the right place on the system that tells the system how to start up um, the wiki based Docker Compose. Uh, and once the server reboots or something like that, it will always be running uh, in the background. So we can test. So we don't, see, there's no, nothing running here, right? But we can come back here and if we refresh, might take a minute for it to boot up. Yeah, so now it's running in the background. If the server restarts or anything like that, it will always be running, so it's here. So with that, we'll end the tutorial. Um, you now have your own wiki base instance running on the internet with quick statements working. Um, so thanks for watching. Bye.